sound rolling, roll camera, camera rolling, and then I hear like, wait, 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 wait. we need the click track, where's the click track? And we were like ready in the scene shot, and I say, there is no click track. <laughs> My experience with Benedict is kind of uh, a personal. We are friends, so he has attended many of uh, the concerts and uh, the things I've been doing in the past. So when he's writing the script, it's not, I need this and this and this and this type of music. It's more like we have known each other for long and he's, he maybe shows me the scene or it's actually a luxury, <laughs> luxury position. So he's not giving me a too tight of a frame. He says a beat or he says, a, a, he maybe speaks more about the feeling or the, in, the internal life of the, the person in the scene or, or, you know, he dwells in the poetry and, and the kind of story rather in musical concepts or ideas that I have to build on this kind of structure, you know, uh, so for me, maybe the difference is not so much. It's playing around. Uh, I am still lucky enough to have the chance to improvise and make real-time compositions as I talk about them, because sometimes they, they are not just improvising on, on top of a form or, or improvising out of the blue or not improvisation as we think about jazz music or contemporary classic or within a certain framework. It's just improvising, it's playing around. Uh, naturally, when you, when you start walking towards the artwork of a movie, which is storytelling, poetry, music, and, and the brilliance of actors, the energy of an actor, a music machine, like a voice and the physical aspect of someone, uh, then something happens along the way and there, there becomes this character of the movie. Sometimes there are many characters, like 15 themes, different themes all over the movie. And sometimes the music is just one creature, like the instrumentation is the same through the movie and sometimes you don't notice it. Sometimes it's just something in the air. Really don't. And, and again, I'm inexperienced as uh, as a film composer because I accidentally, because of uh, my uh, relation with Benedict, it's kind of accidental that I'm making film music. And a lot, I think a lot of people can say that. You know, some people are determined; they they really want this and and and, and dig into it. And, but I love it. I haven't, you know, I've done these two films, not 200. And I'm, I'm in awe. There are so many beautiful musicians making fantastic sounds and sound worlds of sound and, and scoring these fantastic movies that, you know, there's just a lot of people so much better than <laughs> me doing all this beautiful work. But I've been very lucky and I'm, I'm grateful and I'm, I'm really happy to be here. Also because I'm proud of these two movies of Horses and Men and Woman at War, especially because of the, the humane and, and the, the, the yeah, humane meaning of the movie. It's like, what will you do when it comes to what, 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 what will you do when you need to do something? Will you save a child? Will, will we help each other? Will we just put arms down? Will we put the guns down? It's so easy to say it. Why don't we do it? We had done a number of uh, theater plays. Benedict had been directing in the theater and uh, he kindly uh, offered me to join in on a number of them. So also my early experience with working in the theater was really helpful in, in terms of scoring or, 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 or layering and making a theater work, which is real time 
happening in real time. It's a real time movie, basically. And uh, that's so interesting how that later uh, evolves uh, with me and then Benedict. He had already thought this story out and, and he, he wanted to tell, tell a story like this and about Hatla and about the suppression of and the greed and we're suppressing and pressing down our, you know, our kindness and beliefs and, and what's actually in front of us, like what we need to do. What we don't always do what we need to do. We always do the other thing, you see. When a person is drowning, you have to save the person, but we don't seem to do that too often. Um, so he had a really strong story to tell and he had written it out. And if I remember correctly, he showed it to his old teacher uh, and the teacher said, yeah, well, that's an old story. This is always being told, like, and ben said, I know that, you know, but it, it, every story is new, but it, it's kind of like the, all the other stories that's been told for centuries and or uh, thousands of years. And then Benedict, yeah, the, the teacher obviously asked, but what, how do you want to tell it differently? Like, what, what way would you uh, present it to people as a movie? And then Benedict had been thinking about through these uh, theater years, like, you know, sometimes the musician is on stage and it's no, it's just there. And through the history of movies, it's always, it's been there very often. But somehow this was deeper, so this would be more like the musicians would appear with the music as something deeper, as almost being a conscious element, a subconscious, or this inner voice, or, or so that was his idea. So when he presents it, presents it, uh, I hook on to it. I said, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> this would be a wonderful way to move ahead, and it will need, you know, planning. It was, it was, uh, we were supposed to uh, go in to shooting, but it got delayed a year, you see. We kind of got an extra year to plan and compose and make something happen. So we, that was, we were lucky it got, got delayed, you know, even though that had, had its problems. But what happened then is we could just do this playing around and and, uh, you know, figuring out what would be here and, and throwing ideas off the table, you know, making themes that would, you know, be there or not be there. So it was a wonderful time of, of preparation. And by the time we were going to shoot, I, we had already pre-composed, pre-made most of the scenes, which made it possible for us to pre-record the whole score before shootings. <laughs> uh, and we, it was, the decision was made to do that so that while shooting the, the scenes we would be uh, appearing in, we would keep that as uh, that would be playing, but still we would be, be recording to that as well. And on my demand that we would not be playing exactly the same way we would be playing in the score, we would actually be performing also on set when possible. Sometimes it what was winds or something was so loud it wasn't didn't make any sense. But then we had the pre-recordings we could use. So we would use those as our structure, and additionally we would record on set. And sometimes we, were, we would record, when the, when the music stopped, we would even play further on set, you see. Because the movie hadn't been shot or edited. So when the movie would be uh, put together, we sometimes would have more music after the scene on set. You see what I'm saying? So we were gathering energy, we were gathering material, and we were gathering the music on different locations. We shot the movie, all these scenes, and the week after, we recorded the whole score again, 
outside. So we would have studio recordings uh, before the movie was shot. We would record on every uh, scene that we were seen playing. And then we would record the whole score again. <laughs> so it was th we had three, so we had kind of three possibilities. So instead of having the movie shot, edited, and then the composer, which in this case was me, would see it, yeah, let's do this and this and this. Then we had these different possibilities. Mentally, that would mean just energy-wise, different energy. So sometimes you would use on-set recordings, and that would sound a little bit different. So you would have you would have this different energy, and and, and sometimes it was uh, uh, music that took over. Sometimes it's music to support, and sometimes it's music to bridge, make, making a tunnel between scenes or chapters in the movie, or it would put put something in the back of your head in a scene that would kind of subconsciously take you to another scene before it would happen. So all these different psychological, it would be more, it would be more about that than uh, much more about the story and this, this way of telling the story rather than uh, uh, concepts of composing, really. I remember the face of the engineers. They, they, we had wonderful sound engineers on the movie and they came from France and they were all set up. They had all the equipment and they were just no bullshit guys, like phew, straight to the point. And I got a little bit stressed, like, oh, they really know what they're doing. <laughs> and we do not know what we are doing. We had no clue. Like, you know, it felt that way. We were dressed up, waiting on set for hours and the catering bus and, you know, actors on stage and the producers was visiting, you know, it's a hell of a ride, you know. Tens of thousands of euros every day, you know, being spent. And I'm like, like we have no, we don't know what we're going to do. It's like, are we improvising or not? But we kept our faces straight. And because all this preparation with Benedict, I had the feeling, I was not sure, but he took the fight, Benedict himself. The first day on set, and they're saying, roll sound, sound rolling, roll camera, camera rolling. And then I hear like, wait, 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 wait. We need the click track. Where's the click track? And we were like ready in the scene shot. And I say, there is no click track. <laughs> and their faces just turned white. And I was like, just trust us, just roll sound. And he had the played back, he was gonna, which was the pre-recorded score. And I remember this first day, and during lunch break, he was like, you don't have any code or, or I said, no, it's, we have a lot of music, but we don't have the click track. <laughs> and I say, it's gonna be okay. And I was just learning so much that that was not the procedure, like that would not be, possible he would in his mind he was like we have to have that but i said like come on how many like how was music forty thousand years ago it's been here it's always here you know we come and go and and he's asking for the click track it's wonderful and i was like you know it's okay we don't need that there is no click track and i meant it like and we had such a great time they were so good and they were right on it and there was this trust and they would be really precise on, they would be so, uh, they would be almost uh, aggressive to people on set because they would ask for more silence than I would dare to. Like we need silence on set, you see what I mean? Because there's so much noise on set sometimes. So they got eager to really get silence on set while we, when we were recording and, and that would be a lot of fun. They would like, Shh! Shut up! They would be shouting at people and, you know, I didn't dare to do that. <laughs> you know, it was, it was a nice energy and we were laughing about it and, yeah. So for me, I'm raised with a, uh, raised um, one of four brothers, 
and her mother would sing. She would play guitar and trumpet. So this energy of music has always been there. It's been a casual way of life. It's been more like we would gather and sing and, and she would strum her guitar and all these lyrics and songs. We would be playing in a marching band since we were kids. I played saxophone, so collaboration. And a lot of people, a lot of kids uh, experience this and that, that kind of, that kind of uh, transports on, it just moves on with you. Either you leave it and say like, this is my youth. Now I'm, you know, now I want to grow up. I'll become a composer, I'll become a, you know, this and that, or, you know, professional, I'll become a professional pianist or professional or something, and I'll change my ways. That did not <laughs> happen for me. And I, maybe I'm, you know, that would be one way, but uh, I back to this point because uh, what I'll say now is maybe the, the, I cannot blur the line between personal and I don't manage to do that. But I adore people who can. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> and then they're off. You know, they just can't, they can divide it. They can really, and I, maybe in another life, or I've tried it a number of times. But I'm, having said that, also very happy and lucky and, and inspired to have the, have the possibility you know, I'm not talking tons of movies or projects, but I'm lucky enough that I have the possibility to work on this, with this aspect. Like, I don't know if you, someone might relate to what I'm saying, that it's about this, you know, what are we hearing, sensing, where, do, where does all this bullshit come from? Like, is it bullshit, is it not? Like, what's a story, what's not a story? Is this a part of your story? Why are they appearing? And with Benedict, it's, you know, uh, it's been a beautiful, uh, I, I, I hope it's not over yet, you know, there, there's more to come, but especially this movie was uh, a, a beautiful ride. I'll say it, I was very fascinated about the movie The Hateful Eight, the way Ennio Morricone finally scored the movie by, by Quentin Tarantino, who always uses music from here and there, bits, he builds it up. But now he got this old man to score the whole movie, and I was just like, I went to see it, actually with Benedict. And I was in a, in a bliss, it was beautifully done. It was the whole story, and Lawrence of Arabia is a fantastic score. It's a long score, you know. There are elements of movie making in, in Stanley Kubrick 2001 Space, Od Space Odyssey, which is kind of, uh, I haven't gathered my mind around it still. There are scenes there, and he's obviously using, he, he spoke to Penderecki, which is a fantastic composer. And, and in, in 2001 Space Odyssey, there is like Richard Strauss and Georg Ligeti appearing, and it's, you don't, uh, it's such a vast space of sound and music and elements of music and then the qu uh, choir pieces uh, that he's using when the wall, it's like, it's this feeling of movie making, it's like, then it doesn't matter that no one, today it kind of matters because of the procedure of each individual that I am scoring the movie or you are doing this. It's kind of like, we paint this story and, and, and we need this and, and that and this. So, speaking about collaboration, sometimes that's beautiful when, you know, the, the painting of the piece is done by very different artists. And conceptually wise, it's uh, all over the place, you know. There's no continuity or concept in, in instrumentation or anything. But that's the, that's the piece, it needs that. Uh, there is a movie called There Will Be Blood by Johnny Greenwood, which is absolutely, that blew my mind because it's through composed, it's very aggressive and beautiful in some parts, and the music is like a beast, like an animal, the whole movie. And uh, I was really like, yeah, it kept me through the movie. And it's brilliantly done, but that's a really strong score. And then he, and then Johnny did another score recently, uh, Power of the Dog, if I remember. 
he's a great composer with all, all the skills, but he's also a pop star, a rock and roll artist with, you see, it's, and it doesn't matter, but in him I hear suddenly John Coltrane, and then I hear Stravinsky, and it's just there, and he's not trying to.